China's third aircraft carrier, known as the Fujian and assigned the hull number 18, embarked from the Shanghai Jiangnan shipyard around 8 a.m. on Wednesday, May 1 for its initial sea trials. The primary focus of these trials will be to assess the dependability and stability of the carrier's propulsion and electrical systems. In this video, you will see Fujian aircraft carrier in different angles so don't go away and keep watching. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you can subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Let's continue. Since its inauguration in June 2022, the Fujian has successfully completed its mooring trials, outfitting tasks, and equipment modifications. It has fulfilled the technical prerequisites for sea trials. The carrier, which represents a new generation of naval vessels, was christened after the Fujian province located on China's southeastern coast. This continues the tradition of naming the first two carriers after the provinces of Liaoning and Shandong. The Fujian is the first carrier built domestically in China that incorporates catapults. With a full load displacement exceeding 80,000 tons, the carrier is outfitted with electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear. This marks a significant milestone in the modernization efforts of the People's Liberation Army, PLA, Navy. The Fujian, Type OU-3, is a significant addition to the country's naval modernization efforts. Here are some key details about the Fujian. 1. Design and Build The Fujian is completely designed and built domestically. It is China's first aircraft carrier featuring catapults. 2. Displacement The Fujian's displacement is over 80,000 tons. When fully loaded, it weighs around 100,000 tons. 3. Dimensions The Fujian has a length of 316 meters, flight deck, and a beam, width, of 76 meters, flight deck. 4. Propulsion the Fujian uses steam turbines, with eight boilers and four shafts. 5. Aircraft carried. The Fujian can carry up to 50-plus total aircraft, including 24 Shenyang J-15, 4 J-15D, 12 J-35, 8 Changhe Z-18, 4 Harbin Z-9, and 4 Xi'an KJ-600. 6. Launch System. Unlike the ski jump flight decks of the previous Chinese aircraft carriers, the Fujian is equipped with an electromagnetic catapult aircraft launch system. 7. Name and Number The Fujian is named after Fujian Province and has been given the hull number 18. The Fujian, Type 003, is set to join the ranks of the Liaoning, Type 001, and Shandong, Type 002, which were commissioned in 2012 and 2019, respectively. Both of these carriers utilize the ski jump launch technique for aircraft, featuring a ramp at the end of a short runway to assist fixed wing aircraft in taking off. The Fujian, however, boasts a larger flight deck and a smaller superstructure. It is equipped with three electromagnetically powered catapults, also known as the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, EMALS, as opposed to a ski ramp. EMALS the Navy's latest comprehensive carrier-based launch system enhances the speed of aircraft takeoff. It also allows a carrier to launch a wider range of aircraft, particularly those with heavier payloads. The development of the Type O-3 carrier is a component of a larger modernization initiative within China's military. This aligns with the nation's increasing focus on the maritime domain and the need for the People's Liberation Army Navy plan to operate further from China's shores. As the Chinese economy continues to grow, the Navy's role in securing sea lines of communication becomes increasingly crucial. Through these modernization efforts, China's Navy has evolved into a modern, capable force, comprising of multi-role platforms equipped with advanced weapons and sensors. In comparison, the U.S. Navy's Kitty Hawk-class fleet carriers, which first entered service in the 1960s and were phased out by the late 2000s, had a length of 319 meters and displaced 83,000 tons when fully loaded. It is anticipated that the Fujian Type 003 will have a displacement similar to the Kitty Hawk class, in the range of 80,000 tons. Examination of available images of the Fujian reveals a single pyramid-shaped island situated just aft of the vessel's midpoint, suggesting an operational concept that prioritizes aircraft operations over ship maneuver. 
This layout, similar to those of U.S. Navy carriers over the decades, differs from the French Navy's Charles de Gaulle, which has its island positioned more forward, or the UK Royal Navy's Queen Elizabeth class carriers, which feature two islands each dedicated to different ship operations. The island of the Type 003 houses its radars and other primary sensors, which are integrated into the structure, resulting in a smooth finish that minimizes radar cross-section as much as possible for an 80,000-ton warship. The island will accommodate panels for the ship's AESA radar and other sensors. Additionally, the ship's integrated funnel is built into the island, facilitating the expulsion of gases from the vessel's probable combined gas and diesel drive, integrated electric propulsion system. This system will also power its electromagnetic catapults for aircraft launch. While the weaponry is not yet known, images from the sea trials suggest two close-in weapon systems, CIWS, on its port side and two missile-based point defense systems, similar to the U.S. Navy's SEARAM. Overhead imagery indicates that this arrangement is mirrored on the starboard side, resulting in four rotary cannon CIWS and four missile-based point defense systems. Furthermore, centrally located sections on both port and starboard could potentially house directed energy, possibly acoustic, weapon systems. Other discernible main features include three catapults for aircraft launch, two lifts for transporting aircraft from the hangar, four trap recovery lines, and five clearly marked landing areas for rotary wing aircraft. As for the expected air wing, it is believed that the Fujian Type 003 will be able to carry around 50 to 60 aircraft, depending on the source, including J-15 fighters and KJ-600 airborne early warning aircraft. Future plans undoubtedly include enabling J-35 fighters to operate from the carrier. Once operational, the Fujian will rank as the third largest aircraft carrier class in service globally, trailing only the 100,000-plus tonnage of the U.S. Navy's Nimitz and Ford-class carriers, and surpassing the next largest, the UK's Queen Elizabeth class, which displaces around 70,000 tons. The Fujian's air wing will fall short of the US Navy's 70 to 80 aircraft capacity, albeit by a relatively small margin. China is also developing the larger Type 004 supercarrier, a likely evolution of the Type 003, which may be nuclear-powered and displace over 100,000 tons, matching the largest carriers in service with the US Navy. James Marcus, a defense analyst at Global Data, regards the Fujian as undeniably more advanced than carriers developed by France and the UK, representing a significant advancement from the Shandong and Liaoning designs. China is also developing the larger Type 004 supercarrier, a likely evolution of the Type 003, which may be nuclear-powered and displace over 100,000 tons, matching the largest carriers in service with the US Navy. Due to the ski ramps on older carriers, they were restricted to one type of jet and helicopters only. Now they will likely include AEW propeller planes, and eventually the next generation J-35, Marcus stated. When it can consistently cycle flights of fighter patrols alongside the AEW and anti-submarine planes smoothly, then it'll be a very close competitor to US carrier operations. The numbers of the U.S. Navy continue to decline amid budget cuts for the fiscal year 2025. In October, the U.S. Department of Defense DoD, announced that China now possesses the world's largest navy, boasting a battle force of over 370 ships and submarines. This significant growth has been largely attributed to the launch of their third carrier, the Fujian, and the commissioning of their third amphibious assault ship. With the ongoing sea trials of the Type 003 class and the development of the Type 004 supercarrier, the People's Liberation Army Navy plan is surpassing the U.S. Navy in terms of sheer numbers. This advantage is further amplified by the fact that the plan does not have to divide its forces between the Atlantic and Pacific. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy is struggling to reach its target of 355 ships set in 2016, as the delivery of new platforms like the Ford-class carriers and the refurbishment of its nuclear submarine fleet are experiencing delays. During a recent U.S. Senate hearing on the U.S. Navy's FY25 budget request, it was revealed that the budget, when adjusted for anticipated inflation, results in a 2% reduction in spending compared to the previous year. Only six battle force ships are slated to be built in FY25, which falls short of compensating for the expected retirement of 19 vessels from service. 
Senators disclosed that the U.S. Navy is projected to have a fleet of 287 ships in FY25, which is expected to further decrease to 280 by FY27. The sea trials of China's Fujian Type 003 carrier could potentially mark a turning point in the balance of naval power in the Western Pacific. With the impending introduction of the Type 004 supercarrier in the coming years, China could extend its reach into the central waters, an area that was once almost exclusively dominated by the U.S. Navy. Beijing is committed to investing substantial resources in the expansion and modernization of its military forces. From 2019 to 2023, defense spending recorded a compound annual growth rate CAGR, of 7.5%. It is projected to register a CAGR of 6.6% from 2023, amounting to an estimated $323.7 billion by 2028. Furthermore, China's Ministry of National Defense is anticipated to allocate $1.4 trillion between 2024 and 2028 for the acquisition of military hardware and the modernization of its armed forces, as per forecasts by Global Data. We will follow up on Fujian aircraft carrier and report back as we learn more about its latest development. That's all for now and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our China Tech Update. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, like, and share our video. We will bring you more similar contents like this one. Thank you again for watching.